Okay. Um, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, thanks. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers. It's a, it's a real pleasure and a privilege to be here. It's my first time at IHES. Um, I'll try to give um, um, a talk about about a topic that some somewhat overlaps with um, Yuval Peres's talk from uh, from yesterday, um, but I'll I'll try to keep all the definitions. Um, to repeat all the definitions that, that are going to be used today, uh, just in case some of you um, might have missed it. And the talk will be an attempt to understand what's, uh, what's happening to a random <coughs> walk on a random environment. The random environment that we're going to discuss will be a random regular graph. So I'll use script G to denote the distribution. So this is for So we'll take D to be at least three, fixed. And we'll have this will be just nothing more than the uniform distribution over D regular graphs on n vertices. OK. And the question that we'll be interested in is, what is the quenched mixing time? simple random walk on G. So this, is, uh, this is the main question. And in particular, we'd like to understand, does it exhibit cutoff? OK. This is a very nice board. Um, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Um, let's, let's go through a few quick definitions that Yuval already uh, uh, gave you yesterday. So, but these will be imperative. If we have a finite, irreducible, aperiodic Markov chain, which we denote by xt, and let's say with that its transition kernel is p and stationary distribution is pi, we'll define its mixing time. And we'll, when we say mixing time, we, without saying anything, then, then the default would be the total variation mixing time, or L1. This is the first time such that the total variation distance drops to epsilon or less. Okay, so what is DTV? <coughs> Here we just take the worst starting position. And look at the, at the total variation distance between the transition kernel raised to the power of t and pi. Okay. And I'll remind you that total variation distance is the supremum over events a of mu of a minus nu of a. And in our case, the discrete countable case actually will be in the, in the finite case, then this is also equal to 1 half of the L1 distance between mu and nu as, as vectors. And so you sum over the, the points of your probability space. x, for instance, if it's simple random walk, then this would be n points. The points are the vertices. 
and you'll just have one half of sum over x, mu of x minus nu of x in absolute value. Okay, so, so total variation distance is associated, associated with L1, and um, you could also ask what is the mixing time if instead of uh, measuring our convergence to equilibrium, we'll, uh, we'll according to L1, we'll measure it according to L2. And that's also interesting, but um, somehow any LP that you choose, and this, this is a repeating, th th this, this theme repeats itself in various uh, different settings, um, any LP that you choose for P larger than one has an analytic flavor that fails to capture various physical uh, quantities that, that are associated with the problem, and somehow this characterization of L1, as, as if you look at this, at this specific formula, it looks like I'm taking the worst distinguishing statistic between the two measures. That is something that, that is unique to P equals 1, and maybe because of that, methods that work for, there are m multiple methods that, that, that work when you try to analyze every p that is larger than one, but fail at p equals one. And there are theorems that, that, uh, that unite all p that is larger than one and fail exactly at one. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends on how you want to look at it, the p equals one is the case that we are most interested in. Okay. I wonder if this upper board is... Those, those are what? Oh, <coughs> there's a oh, there's a hidden hook. And oh, okay. Oh. Okay. So we have the question. We want to understand what T mix is, and let me also just tell you. Um, according, so relating to this second bullet, what does it mean to have cutoff? To remind you, um, the definition of T-mix is valid if you have a Markov chain on five points. The definition of cutoff already discusses not one specific chain, but you'll have to have a sequence of chains, a system whose size will grow to infinity and will be um, captured by some sometimes implicit parameter n. In our case, it would be just the size of the graphs. We'll consider a family of graphs whose size tends to infinity. Um, so for a sequence of Markov chains, xt, and here's this implicit parameter n, sometimes I'll drop it, we say there is cutoff. If and only if, so uh, let's look at this definition for a second. We had T mix of epsilon, and, and what does it mean, this T mix of epsilon? Um, we are looking at the total variation distance. And <coughs> now we'll, let's say, let's say that you forget about this maximum over x. Let's fix one x, and we have one, one system on, I don't know, 100 sites, and now we are slowly increasing T. The distance to the stationary distribution is non-increasing. Okay, it's like that for, a, for, any, uh, for any LP metric that, that you will choose. Uh, one way, th there are multiple ways to prove it. So the distance looks like that. It starts at, let's say, 1 or nearly 1 because you have a point mass and the stationary distribution will give it, let's say, I don't know, probability 1 over n. Okay, so, so it starts almost at 1 and then it will slowly walk its, its way down to 0. Okay, by, by the, the fundamental theorem of, uh, of Markov chain, essentially, uh, eventually, it will converge to its stationary distribution. So as time goes on, this is your dTv at time t, it will go towards zero. Okay, and, and our mixing time is just saying, let's threshold it at some epsilon, and this will be t mix of epsilon. This is for one chain. The cutoff phenomenon is about understanding the shape of this curve. It's about understanding whether this thing happens like, like this, or whether it happens like that. 
Okay, but in order to actually quantify it, I mean, this is meaningless if you have just one fixed n. So, so the difference between these two would be, before I write the formula, would be to say, um, when I have a, a, sis a sequence of such chains, I will, I will ask for the transition from being near 1 to being near 0. This is about 1 and this is about 0. I would like this entire transition to take place in a window that is microscopic, okay? And this would mean that there is cutoff. So if and only if, um, for every epsilon that is between 0 and 1, T mix of epsilon, and I'll put the subscript n, divided by T mix of 1 minus epsilon, this goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. Okay, so this means that, that as you are fixing your, whichever epsilon that you, that you want to fix, so 0 0.99, 0 0.01, as you increase n to infinity, the, the leading order term would still be the same. So as you look at, so at this curve that I drew for, of the convergence of equilibrium from afar, it looks like it is essentially 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. And all the action takes place in this little window. Okay, so this is one definition. And equivalently, we can say, so equivalent, it's not exactly equivalently, it's uh, more specifically, uh, if you want to quantify exactly what happens in this, in this window, uh, to go beyond the first order term, then we'll say that the sequence Wn is a cutoff window if, um, if Wn is, let's say, little o of T mix, and then you put a constant here. I don't know, we can put a half. I have some kind of a moral inhibition from putting anything that, that is bigger that or equal to a half because usually in the literature when you do mixing times, anything less than a half is good for multi submultiplicative uh, behavior. So you take a quarter or one over e, these are the usual candidates, but not a half. But, but, but in our case, it won't matter. Um, so, so it's a cutoff window if it, has, it is microscopic, I took it to be little o, and for every epsilon, there exists some c <coughs> such that um, T mix, let's write a supremo over n, T mix of epsilon minus T mix of 1 minus epsilon is at most this constant times Wn. Okay, so this tells you that we can, here we can put Wn, and Wn has smaller order than the length of time that it takes you to actually get to this Wn. Okay, so this would be here T mix of a half, but it would also be T mix of 0.99, and it would also be T mix of 0 0.001. They will all, you can place all of these uh, points on the same, uh, in this, at the same location, because they differ by at most Wn. Okay, so, so this is cutoff. Any questions? Yes, uh, yeah, you don't want to say that it is, uh, to remove the soup and say this is true for n not uh, uh, but, but I can take C to be. Yeah, but you have an end on the left hand side. Divide by omega n. The left hand side divide the left hand side by omega n. Yes, I can say it. Okay, so for such that and for all okay, exists C such that for large enough n. Thank you very much.
Okay. Uh, okay. So so this is what it means to have uh, to have cutoff, and now uh, we can ask ourselves: Do we expect re revisit this uh, question of uh, of what ha of of our environment and say we have a random walk on a graph on a, on a family of graphs? These are just uniformly uh, drawn graphs, so graphs drawn from the uniform distribution over uh, all graphs that are free regular. And we'll choose that for every end. So this is our sequence of graphs. And, and, and the, the basic question is, do we have this behavior, this sharp transition from being near 1 to being near 0? Um, and that would be the main, the main goal of, uh, of, of, this, uh, of this course. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's give you some uh, um, so in order to, to understand whether we expect there to be cut off or not, I will remind you first of all of, uh, of this quick uh, criterion that is spectral due to uh, so this is uh, due to Yuval, he may have mentioned this yesterday. Uh, so let's Let's recall that a random deregular graph, G, so this is D that is at least 3, with high probability has eigenvalues lambda 1, that is 1, lambda 2, and so on, such that lambda i soup over i, that is at least 2, is at most 2 square root d minus 1 plus little o of 1. Okay, so this goes back to, this was proved by Friedman in 08. It was proved uh, a long time before 08, but it appeared in 08. Yeah, just when you say the little o of 1, you should say with respect to what? In okay, so this, so there exists so, so for every, okay, so, so uh, you'll just, there, there'll be a, you can choose, a, you can choose as any sequence. Let's say, okay, for every, so for every, for every epsilon larger than zero, this holds, for instance. So with, with high probability, this holds. Okay, so now this, the statement is formally. <sighs> That's right. So, so the question is, so with high probability, I would mean with probability, with probability that is 1 minus little o of 1, where this little o of 1 term tends to 0 as n goes to infinity. And now it is fully formal. Okay, so um, when I saw Charles' uh, title, at first I was convinced that he would talk about his proof of, oh, you will? Okay, <laughs> but because so far he hasn't. Okay, so, uh, so Charles, Charles has a very nice. Um, well, it's it's actually it's a it's a in a in a breakthrough result uh, from about a year and a half ago. He gave a very short proof of uh, of this result and actually a, a stronger result. I'll get to that. I'll get to that a little later. And what is nice, I think, as, as I still haven't gotten to, uh, to, to the plan of the course, but what is nice, uh, I, I find, in, in this topic is that there's an intimate uh, relation between understanding the spectrum of these random graphs and understanding random walk on, on, uh, on, on these graphs. Somehow it seems that the, that the techniques in this paper and also in Charles' paper, and also in a paper that happened in between Friedman and Kohler, are, are, uh, are related to understanding, to counting non-backtracking paths. And we are also, in order to understand this, we will find ourselves un trying to understand the, the, the structure, the behavior, the, the, to count also uh, non-backtracking paths, and how they are kind of structured in the graph. So, um, so it seems like sometimes we use, the spe in, we use the spectrum in order to understand the simple random walk, and sometimes we use the walk in order to understand the spectrum. Okay. So, um, 
So going back to this, uh, to this cutoff, what, what can we say from this, uh, from, from, from this <coughs> result? Well, we know from this result that simple random walk on G, I, I'll, by the way, uh, I didn't say that, but when I say that the graph has eigenvalues, of course, I mean that the adjacency matrix of the graph has these eigenvalues. Okay, so it's a symmetric matrix, and, uh, and, and its eigenvalues are real. They are between minus D and D, per one for binions and so on. Um, I took this uh, for granted. Um, so simple random walk on G, okay, would have what, what is its gap, its spectral gap. So for the simple random walk on G, I will just take the adjacency matrix, and I will just make one of the possible <coughs> D moves from every vertex. So I need to divide the adjacency matrix by D. Lambda 1 becomes the trivial eigenvector of 1. And now I want to understand what the gap is. It's just 1 minus, one minus the second largest eigenvalue in absolute value, which is at least 1 minus 2 root D minus 1 divided by D. And I'll write here an epsilon. OK? So with high probability. And in particular, we see that, that the gap, the inverse gap, is fixed. OK, so, um, so in 2004, Yuval had this criterion. He's, he's in the room, so uh, uh, so, uh, he, so he won't mind uh, if I uh, tease him a little. He had this, uh, this conjecture that this criterion would uh, predict cutoff. Uh, but whenever uh, someone would come up with a counterexample, he would say that the counterexample is not natural. <laughs> so the, the actual conjecture is this criterion predicts cutoff whenever your Markov chain is a natural one. And therefore, it is really hard to refute. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, so I tease him. But but in some sense, at least, in, and you'll see from from uh, from these three uh, talks, I hope that you'll see that uh, th there is something behind that. Because in in some sense, whenever the examples that we're going to discuss are nice and transitive, it seems like you cannot you cannot destroy this uh, this this uh, criterion. So any, any attempt to somehow refute it that we know of today involves some kind of, a, of, take of, of an attempt to take different objects and hide an object of type A within a larger object of type B, which is kind of cheating. OK, anyway, so, so, uh, so the, the criterion was saying that if gap times T mix tends to infinity, which is why it was called, at least in that paper, this is in AIM in 2004, this is the so-called product criterion. Implies cutoff. OK, so the left hand is necessary, is necessary for cutoff if you have a reversible chain. Um, and that you should have, uh, that, that was in yesterday's, uh, in yesterday's lecture, although then Yuval instead, uh, yesterday, instead of calling it, using this phrase, he, 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 he said T rel, which is the inverse gap, is little o of T mix, but it is the same. <coughs> okay? and, and the not necessary, but the sufficient bit is the kind of a, is, is, is the, the part of the conjecture which, strictly speaking, uh, has counterexamples, but not when the system is nice and transitive and has, let's say, bounded degrees and so on, or comes from a spin system that on a, on a transitive uh, underlying geometry like a torus. There we have no counterexamples, and, and we've been proving uh, cutoff in those situations one case after another. Okay, so, so going back to our simpler setting of just a random deregular graph, what is our gap? It is uh, the relaxation time is order 1. Our gap is fixed. 
What is T mix? Well, it doesn't really matter what T mix is because obviously it diverges within, right? You need to visit. You need to have a realistic chance to visit all vertices. The stationary distribution is uniform, okay? And this is a bounded degree graph. So um, it is actually easy to see that it should be at least log n, okay? So this is a... But, but, but judging from this uh, criterion, we would expect there to be cutoff. And indeed, uh, this was a, here's an explicit conjecture of, of Duet in 07. This is in his book, uh, Random Graph Dynamics. So he conjectured that T mix on, on a random three regular graph, so take a uniformly chosen three regular graph, this should have T mix that is um, asymptotically three log base two of n. Okay, now in the book he actually uh, phrased it for the lazy random walk. And then it was a six instead of a three, but I'll write it like that if you don't mind. He wouldn't mind with high probability. Okay, and, 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 and he didn't just conjecture this out of the blue, um, and I don't think that, uh, that he was aware of, of the, of, of the uh, advances on the, well, at least on, on, on the advances that, that came in this. He wasn't part of this AIM uh, workshop. Lots of people were. Percy was there. David Aldous was there. Um, but um, but Duret wasn't. Uh, what, uh, what drove this conjecture was a previous work with Berestiki. Previous work, meaning, so Nathanel, this was his thesis with Duet. And they had the following result. So they showed that if you, let's, let's think about what this mixing time is. Mixing time is understanding when you cannot distinguish between the stationary distribution and the distribution of where the walk is with anything that gives you a, that with anything that gives you weight that is a, a, a more than epsilon, for instance, because there's no better distinguishing statistic. And what Berestiki and Duret looked at was one specific marginal, one specific test function, a very natural one, which is just the distance from the origin. So distance from the origin and morally, they said that this distance from the origin, um, and I'll write it informally first, equi equilibriates, okay, at t, which is about 3 log 2 n. Okay, and, and the formal statement formally, they showed that for every alpha fixed, the distribution of x, which is, let's say, so xt will be simple random walk, the distribution of simple random walk at time alpha log base 2 of n and x0, okay, is the minimum between alpha over 3 and 1. Oh, the distance times, times log base 2 of n. So, okay, so okay, let's do it like this, one over. Now it's fine. Okay, better. <laughs> okay, so if we divide it by log base 2 of n, then up to lower order terms, what we get is alpha over 3, minimum with 1, meaning that if we look at just this alpha, we see that 
at after time 3 log base 2 of n, it stays the same. Okay, so it kind of increases, increases, and then becomes constant, and this is at, at 3 log base 2 of n. And then the natural conjecture is, well, probably this marginal tells us everything that we want to know. Once our speed, equi our, uh, once our distance equilibrates, it must mean that we are essentially where we wanted to get to. Okay? And um, oddly enough, this intuition fails as soon as you have even the slightest variability in your degrees. Okay, so instead of a, a random three regular, if it's if 90% of the sites are three regular and 10% are four regular, it will already not be true. Okay, so so this test function of the distance will look exactly the same way. It would increase linearly and then it would stabilize, but the location where that happens will hap will 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 give you a false prediction of mixing. Mixing will actually occur macroscopically later. <coughs> that is something that we, at first, uh, when you see the proof, it's, it's kind of obvious. But at first, it, uh, uh, it struck us as a surprise. Okay, we, uh, and this is something I want to get to on Friday. Okay, but, but now at least you see why, uh, why T-mix should be around that time. And now I can finally get to the plan of <laughs> You say the conjecture is that Tmx is 3 log 2 n. Is that for a particular app stock, or are you saying that's cut off at? Ah, OK. OK, so, so Duret just said, uh, when you say Tmx and don't say anything, usually you mean the standard one, which uh, is either 1 over 4 or 1 over e. And when Duret uh, made the conjecture, he just meant, OK, this is Tmx, and this is what it should mean. But, uh, but but what, what we'll see, and, and this, is, uh, this is what I'm going to get to right now. So the, my plan is to give three different proofs of the following result. If you take G and D for D that is fixed, at least three, then with high probability, simple random walk on G has cutoff <coughs> at time. And it turns out that this is the right generalization of three. d over d minus 2. Okay, so, this is the so this is the result. And the plan is to give three different proofs, um, each of which serves a different purpose, as we later find out, uh, as we uh, later found out. Uh, the first one, proof 1, would be com strictly combinatorial. Or or essentially combinatorial, it will be counting non-backtracking. So this is non-backtracking paths. Okay. This. Uh, and this is the first proof that we had of, uh, of, of this result. It's, uh, and it's, uh, it was joint work with, uh, with Alan Sly. This was in Duke in, in, 010, in 2010. Proof two will be spectral. Okay, via analyzing again the non backtracking random walk operator. And when we say a spectral analysis of the non backtracking operator, 
um, it's, a, it's much uh, more delicate than one may think because this operator is not normal. Um, and this, and this uh, uses the method that we had in a paper from, uh, from a year ago or so with Yuval. This is the, uh, this is the Gaffer paper with Yuval. And proof three, oh, will be a hybrid of the two. So we'll need to say something about, about the, the structure of the graph and where the random walk would be and something about uh, about, about, about paths, and then we'll use a spectral argument. Okay, and this is, uh, this appeared in a paper with Nathanel and Yuval and Alan. This is, uh, this will at some point appear in AOP. Okay. Uh, uh, remind me later, Yuval, I think I got the galleys. <laughs> yes. Uh, what is the mixing time for the Lubotsky Phillips Oh, um, excellent question. Um, could you wait with this question for one minute? Okay, it is, I'll, I'll answer, it is the same. It is, it is, it looks exactly like, like the result for the random deregular one, okay? But, uh, but here's why I wanted to wait with the question. Um, the reason for giving the three different proofs is, is the following. So first, um, um, I should, uh, let's, let's, let's think of it this way. Um, here we have the world of, of expanders. Okay, so, so now we're going to draw bounded degree graphs. So we have expanders. Expanders ne uh, do not need to be regular. You can have uh, uh, Fantastic expanders where half the degrees are three, half the degrees are four. Um, there, there is a, there can be counterexamples to this cutoff criterion um, that one can construct. Uh, there's a paper, uh, we, we have a paper um, um, with Ellen where one, where, where one constructs um, an expander that is, that is even regular but is not transitive. It's, um, it just has, in a sense, it, is, it has different parts where you kind of destroy this conjecture. But if the expander is nice and transitive, then we should expect it to have cutoff according to this thumb rule. Now here, we have random graphs. Well, the graph is not really transitive, <coughs> but it is sort of transitive, okay? it is symmetric. I'm yes. not sure everybody knows what an expander is. Ah, okay. Uh, an expander is, let's say, just a bounded degree graph that satisfies this. So uh, I'll, I'll write it like that. I'll write it here, maybe. Do I, oh, I'll write it over here. So an expander is a sequence. Again, this, this definition only makes sense if you have a sequence of graphs. Every graph by itself uh, can be an expander, uh, but uh, is a sequence of, let's say, of bounded degree graphs. So bounded degree, I mean that I'll fix some delta in advance. Okay, so delta, at, so, so all the, so by, by, by some absolute constant delta. This will be an upper bound on, on my degree in all the graphs in my sequence. And I'll, so technically, 
an expander will be parameterized by two parameters. One of them I'll call, let's say, uh, alpha, alpha, and one of them will be this delta. So you could say that you have an alpha delta expander if all graphs have degree that is at most delta, and the gap is, and the gap of simple random walk is bigger than alpha, bigger than zero. And these are two absolute constants. Okay? This would be an expander. Um, it seems like an easy, uh, like, like a natural object, but constructing one explicitly was uh, a long standing open problem. Okay, there are uh, random constructions, are, uh, are fairly classical. Uh, it took a long time until, uh, until the first good uh, cons uh, explicit constructions arrived, and certainly um, one can. There's, uh, there's, a, there's a, a famous theorem due to uh, Alon and Bopana and that tells you that this is essentially the best possible gap that you can have. Okay? And the question that I got before about this lubotsky philipp salma construction, that explicit construction of expanders is, is, is a very special one. It is one that has this gap without an epsilon. So that makes this object um, fascinating and, and extremely difficult to construct. I'll, can I erase this for now? I, I want to, let's, let's, let me put here another piece of the, of the puzzle. <laughs> These are regular graphs. Okay, so what do we think happens? Um, if the expander is nice and let's say transitive, then we expect there to be cutoff. Okay? So transitive is some part here. Transitive. Transitive. We do not know this conjecture of, uh, of Yuval. This is a conjecture of Yuval from around the same time. It appeared in multiple papers, and uh, some, some of which he mentioned uh, yesterday with a, it appears in the paper, I think, with uh, Malvina Luchak and David Levin and also in his book with uh, Levin and Wilmer um, that says that on any transitive expander you should have cutoff. So here I'll write cutoff. Well, I'll, I'll point to it. Uh, transitive? I mean, I mean, it means that the automorphism group of the graph is rich enough to allow you to, to send every vertex to every other vertex. Okay. So for every pair of vertices u and v, there is an automorphism <coughs> of the graph such that the image of u is v, formally. Um, okay, so, so for instance, if you have some kind of a, if you have a Cayley graph, then, then it's trivial, you can just take the, the your, your automorphism will just be to multiply u by inverse v, time, by, v by v times inverse u. And then, okay. Um, so, so this is transi transitive. This is still open, okay? And, um, and uh, a few years ago, until a few years ago, un until, until we had that result with Yuval, I would, uh, I would go around and say, here's the, result, here's the conjecture of Yuval. Every transitive expander has cutoff for simple random walk. And I would uh, say as a joke, at the end, I would give this as an open problem and say, prove that every transitive uh, uh, family of transitive expanders has cutoff. Then there would be another bullet that would say, find one family of transitive expanders with cutoff. Because the conjecture was that this entire family has this uh, phenomena, but we couldn't even have one small, one small <coughs> example that would somehow boost our belief that this indeed is, is a widespread phenomenon. Okay, now we know that inside <laughs> this, fam this family of transitive graphs, there is a family of Ramanujan graphs. So R is called Ramanujan. And this is I, and this is something that I'll get to. <coughs> okay, that's true. 
So it is regular, but not just transitive. Okay, so, but, but I meant to say that we do have a family of graphs that are transitive, so those that happen to be Ramanujan and transitive, for which we know that cutoff does, uh, does occur. Okay, so now we have examples. And, and this, is, this is this proof. Okay, so um, now, so here, we, ha here we, we know that there is cutoff. For random graphs with, uh, with degree sequences, with nice degree sequences, we know that there is cutoff. And essentially, elsewhere, we are still trying to, we are still struggling with, uh, with, with somehow understanding when, um, as, as you may have uh, heard from, from yesterday from Yuval's talk, we, we, we are, we, it, it is still uh, kind of mysterious. However, I chose to look at this specific shaded part for this uh, summer school because um, the three different proofs will somehow allow us to invade the different parts that are not in the intersection. Namely, this proof, okay, which is uh, the one that we're going to start with, um, it's very, so this is the, rec this is here, the shaded part it is, is GND, it's a random deregular graph. Um, the first proof, you could, you could somehow uh, see that, that, it, that, that it makes sense to, to use it in other settings, and there was, let me uh, quote exactly. Um, so for instance, there's a paper. The, the, the in, in a nutshell, I want to say that each of these three proofs extends to somehow different directions and allows you to, uh, to, to understand the simple random walk in different generalizations of this intersection, uh, in of this kind of shaded area. So, uh, so there's a paper by, by uh, Ben Hamou and Salez, Justin, uh, it's a very nice work, Justin's gonna appear here twice. Um, so this is, oh, oh actually, it, okay, it's from 2015, but it just appeared. So, uh, so this is in AOP. So the basic idea of trying to understand what the walk looks like from one end and what it looks like from the other and developing the, the trees coming from the, from the source vertex and coming from a potential target vertex is useful in other settings as well. And, and, and it found uh, use both in this paper, this, um, this study is non-backtracking random walk on, on, random, on, on random graphs, but not non-regular. And and Charles and Piet and Justin had another paper. Okay, when did you put it on the archive? In 2016. 2016. This is random walk on a directed random graph. Which brings a host of problems uh, because you do not understand what the stationary distribution is like, and it's a beautiful paper. Um, but we won't get well, we I won't get to discuss any of it. Maybe, but probably not. Um, now, now the second part of the proof, the spectral one. Um, I'll prove it for the deregular, for the random deregular case, but it actually is, is the same one that we used in order to cover Ramanujan graphs that are not random. So somehow it will invade to this direction. Okay, so, uh, so as I was saying, the random graph, the proof number one allows you to, at least the main technique allows you to invade to the non-regular world. Proof number two allows you to invade to the, actually here, 
<laughs> to, the, the ter to the world that is non-random, that is deterministic. And the hybrid one um, allows you to, to go again to the non-regular world, the random one. However, uh, it is imperative to use this one if you want to discuss not the non-backtracking random walk, but the simple random walk. So in some sense, uh, doing a non-backtracking uh, random walk um, it saves you, a, there's, there's a world of, of, <laughs> of problems that, uh, that, that you encounter once you allow your simple random walk the small luxury of going back to where you were a step, a step uh, in the previous step. Seems like a small change. But, uh, and the, the directed world is somehow closer to the non-backtracking world in the sense that you don't experience all those issues. However, um, the, the lack of control over the stationary distribution uh, brings uh, uh, different issues. Okay, so anyway, so, so the third one allows you to go here for a simple random walk. This is the third one, and this is the second one. Okay, so that is the plan. Any questions? You won't have time. <laughs> yes. You can always speed up. I'm no. No, mm -hmm. I can't speed up. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, so let us start. Here's a, here's, here's that theorem that I wrote on the upper right, but uh, with with a, a little more details, and then and then I'll, I'll I'll try to start with with the first warm up towards uh, proof one. Today we'll get to do to do this warm up and maybe sketch the the argument of proof number one. Tomorrow the idea would be to go, to go through this uh, argument more carefully and, and go through the second one. Um, and then on Friday to do, uh, to do the last bit, to finish the second one and do the last bit. Um, okay, so let g be g and d be fixed and it's going to go to infinity. So, the first statement, because I, I, I mean, I kind of, this is not too formal the way it's written right there. I mean, with high probability, there is cut, I, wa I want to say it explicitly. Um, okay, so for every S that you choose, positive or negative, fixed, simple random walk on G satisfies that dTV, the way that we defined it, at time d over d minus 2 log base d minus 1 of n plus s square root log n converges in probability to the probability that a standard normal is at least an explicit constant times s. And this explicit constant, in case you care, is this. Okay, so let's look at this statement for a second. This statement tells us that as we decrease s to minus infinity and increase s to plus infinity, we go from 1 to 0. Okay? So minus infinity will be a 1, and plus infinity would be a 0. And this entire window looks like a square root log n. Okay? And whereas the, our main order term is log n. So we have a microscopic window where all the action takes place. Okay, so, so that's what I mean. So this in particular means that you have cut off at that location. This was the main order term. And two would be, here's, here's another, another result, 
that for every epsilon fixed, you have the following non-backtracking random walk on G satisfies with high probability that the distance to equilibrium at time log of dn, and you can ask, why do I care about this, this d? I mean, it's constant. Um, and the reason is that, that for non-backtracking random walk, the window becomes constant. So if you add 3 okay so this is what what you could say for the non backtracking random walk as opposed to the simple random walk and And the reason that you have this change, no, notice I'll, I'll highlight the window. So here we have an order one window where the action takes place. And here we have an order whoop log n window. And one could somehow picture the following uh, setting. You have A D R E, sorry, a D regular tree. So the root has degree D, but every other uh, child, every other node in the graph has D minus one children on n vertices. And I'm going to consider random walk starting from this guy, starting from the root. Now, if you just looked at this graph and said, what is the mixing time? Do you have cutoff? Uh, I mean, if you look at this graph, you'll say, well, this graph has an awful spectral gap because I can somehow, uh, I can slash. I mean, this, this entire left subtree sends only one, one edge, let's say, to, to, to the root, but it contains a constant proportion of the graph. Okay, so this is a terrible expander. The gap is, is tiny. Okay, um, and so, but, but, but the point is that, uh, and, and, in the, um, and, and you can show using this, okay, if you, that if you start from the leaves, and this was in, this is I think the next slide of Yuval, I don't know if Yuval are you going to say it, why the tree is not, uh, does not have cutoff? As an exercise? Okay, okay, so. So here's an exercise. I was going to give a few others today, but uh, a little later. But here's an exercise. If you start from the leaf, so no cutoff on, on the tree. And when I say no cutoff, it means worst case. OK, now notice that starting from the root is far from being a worst case. If you start from the leaf, you'll have to climb all the way up to the root and then down in order to actually have a good chance of seeing a constant proportion of the vertices that you are missing if you are in your own branch. Okay, so you'll have, it will take you time that is linear. You are fighting. It is exponentially unlikely to go against the flow, but the height is log. So you will, um, whereas if you start from, from the root, what happens? This is a much simpler scenario. Uh, and by the way, whenever you have a situation where you are fighting bottleneck, like you start at a, at a leaf and you're asking yourself, uh, how long will it take me to actually visit the other branch? So you'll go up and down and up and down because you, you're, I mean, your height is a biased random walk with drift downwards. Whenever you are in a situation like that, um, this is also a thumb rule that needs to be quantified, but you won't have cutoff. This is one of these situations where this criterion would fail, but in the rigorous side of it, you'll have an eigenfunction that detects the fact that you are here, and this eigenfunction will be the dominant one. Okay, this will, be, this will give you the inverse gap, and the inverse gap would have the same order of the mixing time, because the time that it will actually take you to escape this bottleneck 
If you escape it, then, by, then right afterwards you, you will have mixed. Okay, so in these situations, you typically do not have cutoffs. But, but anyway, if you start from, so this was an exercise. Um, also find what is T mix. What is T mix? OK, uh, if you do start from the top, what happens? We are doing, let's say, uh, first of all, let's do simple random walk. So we have D minus 1 children from a typical point. Forget the root. From a typical point. We have d minus children going down and one parent going up. Okay? So our speed is d minus 2 over d. Okay? I will say it a little, uh, I will say it again a little more uh, slowly in a second. That means that in the inverse of this time, times, which is d over d minus 2 times log base d minus 1 of n, which is the height, because every time I multiply by d minus 1 and I have n vertices. So this is the height of my tree. By this time, I will have reached the bottom, plus fluctuations that are square root log n because of the central limit theorem. Okay? So what you see here, and actually this constant, they all come they are exactly those that come from this picture. Okay, we'll see this in a second. However, what happens if we do a non-backtracking random walk? Oh, I, I, I should have said, uh, as I walk down, I, why is it that I even want to hit the bottom? Well, all, all, all that I was saying right now is what happens to the hitting time to the leaves. I was saying that this is concentrated around this point with a window of root log n, and that actually this random time does behave like that. Why is this the mixing time? Well, whenever, I'm, whenever I hit the leaves, I am, by symmetry, because this is just a tree, uniform over which leaf it is, because this is symmetric. Okay? And now there's a, a cascade of weights. Oh, most of the weight is here, and then here, and then here. It is, and then this, is, uh, this, this was uh, the slide, one slide after uh, uh, the point where Yuval stopped. When you have exactly an, an, a, a biased random walk on a line, the hitting time to, to, to the uh, bias towards the right, the hitting time to the right point is, a, is asymptotically the mixing time, also uh, uh, up to the second order term. Okay, so, um, okay so, so this is why I care about hitting the leaves. Now, what happens if I do a non backtracking random walk instead of a simple random walk? Then there is no jiggling up and down. Right? I mean, it looks like a small uh, change. The non-backtracking random walk, to remind you, is a Markov chain over edges, okay? which, so from, if I went from u to v, it's a Markov chain over directed edges. If I went from u to v in the previous step, in my next step, I will go from v to you know, z1 all the way to zd minus 1. I can uh, go to any of the directed edges leaving these vertex except, except the one that goes back to you. So I'm not allowed to do that. You could think of it as if I'm just visiting vertices, v1, v2, v3, v4, uh, but I can, and I can go to any, in, the, in my current step, I can go to any vertex except the one that I actually w came from. But formally, this is, uh, in order to remember that, you are actually remember a directed edge. Okay, so, so this is the non-backtracking random walk. How long will it take it to reach a leaf? That's simple. It just, it's, its height is deterministic. I always go down. So it will take its time log d minus 1 of n plus nothing. You, it is deterministic. Okay, so, so the move from simple random walk to non-backtracking random walk, well, of course, uh, one needs to somehow, this, once it hit, hits the leaves, uh, this analogy, this example dies because then the non-backtracking random walk gets stuck at the leaf and you need to somehow, <laughs> but, but at least uh, morally speaking, we see how, how the window of root log n being replaced by an order one window makes sense if you think that the random walk on a random deregular graph looks like it's walking on a tree. Now, now, locally, a, a random deregular graph is locally tree-like, and then at some point you start closing edges and the structure becomes complicated. 
This picture tells you that you can somehow ignore the fact that the structure becomes complicated. And, and it's as if you really do have just a tree on n vertices. And what you, once you reach the end, you are fine. So in particular, the square root theorem comes from the central limit theorem on the hat? Yes. Disappointing, right? <laughs> <laughs> to the, but simple, either way, yes. Um, and actually, we will see right now, if I can, OK? We will see right now how it comes from the central limit theorem of the height. Uh, so since I'm proving things in a simpler way, I, 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 because this is a, a summer school, I will not try to prove the, the best possible result. In the, in the paper with Alan, we had like one part where we did this for the simple random walk, then one part where we really tried to, uh, to get this window to be the right one, the constant one. And then we also, uh, and we, we cared because we wanted to show that if the degree goes to infinity, then this entire window el gets eliminated and you get just two points, just this and the next one. That's if d goes to infinity arbitrarily slowly. Like, no more window. It's just one point. And then you could say something like this for the simple random walk. Um, like, OK, the simple random walk would then look like its window would look like a log n divided by d log d. That would be the, and this also, make, this also comes exactly from the same central limit theorem. If d is, let's, if d is n to the little of 1. OK, so, so that, that paper has things in a slightly a uh, more accurate way than what I aim to do in this summer school. In this summer school, I will try to, instead of going through the proof in, as it was in that paper, I'm going to, to prove it a little differently. We're going to go through the non back instead of proving things directly for, sim for simple random walk, we're going to prove them for non-backtracking random walk with a worse window, which would make things much simpler. And we'll use an analogy from non-backtracking random walk to simple random walk, which I'd like to, to do right now. Yes. Yeah, so in the picture um, with the tree where you started from yes. the root, it seems to me that uh, once you hit the diameter, basically, you have cut off or something like that, or you have mixing, right? Or the typical distance, uh, yes. Is that something well, that you well, will be discussing here in general, or is it only in your example for the tree, that once you hit the farthest thing that you have mixed? OK, the diameter here would be twice, but uh, so you, so you, so so uh, and also the typical distance, but but uh, but uh, something along those lines will be discussed. Um, the tree is a good is a good uh, thing to keep in in mind when you are thinking about a random irregular graph. But in some strange way, you see this point. Once you hit, once you go distance log base d minus one of n. That's your distance. Forget about the time that it takes to get there. You see all the vertices. However, these points have like the, the, the these points and those points, their distance is twice log d minus one of n in the tree, right? You need to go all the way up to the root in order to. But Only when you start from the root anyway, right? The, the point that I'm trying to make is that on a random irregular graph, it looks like that, but from every vertex. So, which is kind of counterintuitive. These points. When you start from them, from most of them, it also looks like when you go distance log base d minus 1 of n, instead of 2, just 1, you again see all the vertices. So a random irregular <laughs> graph is kind of a funny object. But it is true that in the random irregular graph, here's a nice little exercise. It's a good exercise, and, and I, will, I will discuss it on Friday. So if you have u and v are fixed vertices. And when I mean fixed vertices, you have a random uh, a graph on labeled vertices, v1, v2, v3, v4, all the way to vn. And I'm naming these two vertices. This is v1 and v2. Okay. So the distance with, so with high probability, so with probability that is 1 minus the of 1. Uh, so for, let's put it like this. For every epsilon with high probability, the distance in G between U and V minus log D minus 1 of N is less than uh, epsilon log N. Okay, so 
every, every, so the typical distance in your graph, so this is a, so I fixed these two points. Now I'm randomizing the graph, and I have a distance between these two points, and I'm saying, which, which or, or equivalently, this is saying the average of the, so I'm, I'm taking two random points, what, does the, what is the, the, the distance between them? It looks like log base d minus 1 of n. Okay, and actually, uh, you could say something much better than this. Okay, but this is the exercise. Okay, and, a, a, and what it turns out is that not only is it less than epsilon log n, the worst distance, the maximal distance between every pair of the vertices is log, uh, th this can be replaced by a constant, the worst distance will be log base d minus 1 of n plus a log log term, which is actually there. That's the worst one. <coughs> but, 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 but take this as a simple e exercise, and um, it somehow um, goes back to, to what we said here. Um, log base 2 of n, when you reached log base 2 of n, that's, that was the, the typical distance and also asymptotically the maximal distance in a random three regular graph. Okay. Um, so I was going to erase here. Let me show you this uh, reduction to, to the non-backtracking random walks, which, which we will use in order to prove to give the first proof, and then we will al also see where the where's the theorem, and then we'll also see where the concept comes from. Okay, the theorem is still here. Okay, so um, so let's think of G now. That is just a deregular graph. Okay, on n vertices, it doesn't need to be random. And T will be the deregular infinite tree. Okay, rooted at O. I'll do a little twiddle here. Okay. Um, and we'll also fix some x in G. And write uh, and and write z is the distance of z from O for z in T D. Okay, one last thing, let's take phi to be the cover map from T to the vertices of G. Cover map with, which maps the origin of the, uh, the root of the tree to X, which would be the origin of our walk. So to remind you, this is just uh, this is a map that is locally, uh, locally bijective, okay? Which is, uh, or equivalently, you can think of it as, as saying you start from X and now you're doing, um, you're, you're doing, you're looking at all the, all possible non-backtracking random walks on your G, okay? And these, these correspond to, to TD. Or you can just think of it this way. Okay, so observation one is that simple random walk script S on TD started. If you do simple random walk and start it at O, gives rise to simple random walk X non-script on G simply simply by following the cover map started at X. OK? 
Okay? So this is a trivial uh, observation by definition of this cover map, but this was used in the proof of uh, the alon bopana theorem, that theorem that I said that, that in a family of, uh, okay, it extends that the gap could not be better than this, or equivalently that the soup over lambdas has to be at most 2 root d minus 1 plus, uh, plus little o of 1. That, uh, so that proof that appears in the lubotsky philip sarnak paper used this observation. Okay, so this was observation 1. Okay, I'll move to the right. Observation two is that I uh, met my exercise goals for today. That was the little bit. Is that if you start a simple random walk on T, on T, starting at, at the root, and you condition that this simple random walk at time t is at distance l. Then this probability distribution, that this is a probability distribution, is nothing more than uniform distribution over, over the set of of guys whose distance is L. This is trivial. Okay, but that means that if we start a random walk on G using this exact, uh, using the first observation, if we start a random walk on G, then the probability that uh, our, our probability distribution at time t condition on what the height of the non back of, of this random walk on the cover tree being L is just breaks down to, to summing, okay, over vertices whose distance is L, okay, and now we have uh, the probability starting from okay sorry whose distance is 1 so uh, what i mean to say is something very trivial i want to say that if that just like the 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 walk on the tree if if you know that you are distance l then you are then you are at a uniform leaf if we now look at the graph if i tell you that your distance from a, it, 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 I don't want to say distance from the origin, I have to talk about it in terms of the tree because the graph may have cycles. If I tell you what the distance on the tree is from its origin, then I can just write down the, the distribution as, as a marginal of these non-backtracking distributions. So I'm, the, the only kink comes at the first point where, where the graph actually has a choice over d vertices instead of d minus 1. Okay, so that's the only, that's the only uh, delicate notational bit. I'll write it in a separate line so, so that you'll see. Um, the random walk is, is an object on vertices. The non-backtracking random walk is an object on directed edges. So in the first step, it, it chooses a vertex, and that dictates what directed edge I'm at. Okay, so it chooses a vertex, and I'm looking at the direct siblings of the origin over there, so, so we have O, and then we have Z1 all the way to Z, uh, to Z, D, and now each of these has just D minus one. Okay, from here on. So these are these Zs, and we have the probability from uh, X to phi of z, this is our directed edge, okay, starting from x, going to phi, phi of z, and we have the probability that y l minus 1 is here, where y 
is yt is the non-backtracking random walk with two components. So this is, these are two vertices. Okay? So, in other words, I want to understand simple random walk on the graph. It suffices to, to do the walk on the tree. And then if I tell you that you're at distance L, then you just look at where the walk is on the tree. It's uniform <coughs> over those leaves. And then I just pull it, pull it to the graph. Okay, so, so this looks like a, like a very simple observation, but it is very useful. Because now we can do the following. Just a few more minutes, uh, but we can finish this one. OK. So the right hand side here corresponds to the mean backtracking back path? Okay. Yeah. The, this is non-backtracking non random walk uh, on G. OK, starting from x, phi, z, non-backtracking. This is, oh, I didn't finish the sentence. My apologies non-backtracking walk on G, okay? The, so the script is going to be in T, the non-script is in G, and this is ambiguous, but it's supposed to, this is my non-script Y, <laughs> okay? Um, okay, so, um, Nicola, now the CLT. Simple random walk on T is transient. So, in particular, xt visits O finitely many times, almost surely, many times, almost surely, okay? So that means that our, and, and elsewhere, so elsewhere we know that xt plus 1 minus xt, the difference in heights is now just this guy that we wrote, already deleted, it's this guy that increases by 1 with probability d minus 1 over d and decreases by 1 with probability 1 over d. Okay, this is just on td. So that means, by the CLT, that xt minus d over 2t divided by 2 root d minus 1 over d root t. If you look at, I mean, the 2 comes from shifting this by 1, uh, okay, and then and the difference between the two, this is just uh, the, the variance of a, and then it becomes just the variance of a binomial, okay? So this goes to a normal, to a standard normal. So what can we conclude? I'll bring this up, bring this down. We can conclude that if L is, is T mix of epsilon for non backtracking random walk on G. Okay, so in particular, in particular, it must be that L goes to infinity, so we'll have our CLT over there. Okay, and pi is the uniform distribution, I'm not writing that, and T, we choose to be D over 2 log, sorry, D over 2 L for the, for the speed of random walk, plus S square root L, then I want to now bound the distance between my probability distribution of simple random walk on, a, on G started from X and pi. What is it? Well, I'm looking at, at this guy here, and I, and I know that being a marginal of non-backtracking random walk, the non-backtracking random walk has two ends, this is just the marginal of where, where its end is. 
but taking a projection can only decrease total variation. Okay, so so this will be a a, a, a a projection of the right hand side. It can only decrease. Okay, so this is a projection, and I chose L. Okay, I chose I chose L to be T mix of epsilon. So I'm writing epsilon here plus the probability that the normal random variable is at least some constant times s. Okay? So, in other words, either I did not reach time l on the non back on on the cover tree which is captured by this because of the central limit theorem or I reached time L, which means that my non-backtracking has mixed on <coughs> because of this property. Okay, so I pay an epsilon for the mixing time. Okay, um, so in other words, if I, uh, okay, so we are done uh, for today, but I'd like to say what we just proved. We essentially showed that the upper bound, which is always the <laughs> almost always the harder part of, sho of showing uh, of, of getting the right asymptotics of mixing times is reduced to the following problem. I can uh, the lower bound actually applies here for any deregular graph. It doesn't have to be uh, to be random. Uh, you can't do better than 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 whatever this what this theorem tells you. Mixing at this time is is optimal for any family of deregular graphs, just because. Um, it's, it, it boils down to just seeing the vertices. Otherwise, you, you haven't gone far enough to actually see almost all vertices, so you're certainly not mixed. The, the upper bound uh, here tells you that if you can show that at time log base d minus 1 of n, no constants, plus little o of square root log n, you are mixed, anything that is little o, anything, then the main order term that you will be left with is this root log n, which will overshadow the error that you had for non-backtracking random walk, and then you get an upper bound that is the right one. I still didn't convince you that this is the right one, but it is the right one. Okay? So we will prove, we will, in this tomorrow, we'll show a log log which is not the true one, the true one was a constant, but the log log will get washed off by this root, lo by this root log n that we are adding anyway. So we have a reduction from simple random walk to non-backtracking random walk, which makes our life much easier. Okay? And, uh, and, and is valid also in, in, is valid for any graph. We didn't use the fact that this is a random graph. And in particular, this is what we also use, the we will also use for fixed graphs, for these Ramanujan graphs and so on. Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>